Today nothing special, just one of the finest universal powerful HN integrated amplifiers available in the market. And the European Association of Image and Sound bestowed upon him the prestigious title of the unequivocally best HN streaming amplifier in the entire world. Well, let's attempt to comprehend the factors that contribute to his superiority. The new Hegel H600 is the flagship balanced integrated amplifier of the Norwegian company. He seems to have completely preserved the appearance of the predecessor H590. Here as usual only simple lines, no unexpected facets or exquisite embellishments for Nezenka's discerning taste. Hegel has already done more than he should, rounded the edges so you wouldn't cut yourself. Everything is the same here as before, strict gloomy look without a single decoration. But it is really nice to touch it. He is still iron, potent and monolithic. A genuine Scandinavian rock in the best sense of the word, embodying strength, solidity and resilience. In general you look at him and you have deja vu. But it only seems changes in design 600 are significantly larger than you think. Just need to know where to look. First of all the body has become more powerful. In a direct comparison it can be seen that 600 has slightly more massive side and upper panels. Ventilation slots in the top cover have become wider and are now designed with two levels. This probably indirectly informs us that the 600 requires improved cooling because of the increased power. And now the legs are not plastic but aluminum and they have become larger in diameter. Secondly, you won't believe it but there have been radical changes in the design of the front panel. The size of these knobs has increased. In Norway people initially thought they weren't very tough. But now, yes, you can grab them and feel like a true Viking warrior. The experience is truly remarkable. Although no, Viking is their other new device, but about it separately. There are other important differences, but it is too early to talk about them, so let's talk about the principles of Norwegian ergonomics for now. So, on the facade you only see the input selector, it is on the left, a severe monochrome display that informs you in white on black which input is currently active, plus the volume level and the volume control knob on the right, behind which a masterpiece is hidden. Super precision regulator with minimal noise level. They even write on the website that this is exactly the one that is in their coolest preamplifier P30A. But in fact it is a deception. The preamplifier has a classic potentiometer with stepless rotation and limit switch. Additionally, there is an electronic encoder present. He rotates without restrictions, that is, there are no extreme positions here, plus it's discreet. When rotating, it clicks pleasantly and each click adds one unit to the volume scale displayed on the screen. There is nothing else on the facade, not even the power switch, which is hidden at the bottom under the front panel according to Norwegian tradition. To activate it, you simply need to touch it from below, and this action will turn it on and enable its functionality. In general, the ergonomics here are such that even your cat will cope. Here turn the entrance, there increase the volume. In general, Nothing changes here in Norway, all of their amplifiers look and operate in exactly the same way. They are distinguished solely by height, not all of them have the ability to do it. Everything you need to know about it, 600 is the largest among them. We continue the comparison with 590 and move on to look at the back panel. Here it is clearly visible to the naked eye that the amplifier is new. Only the acoustic terminals have the same design, no need to change, they are very convenient. By the way, they are maximally separated from each other, as this integrator is designed to be close to monoblocks. There are indeed two separate monophonic amplifiers, separated from each other on the sides of the case. Changes in palette of inputs and outputs. First, 600th finally got costly terminals. In the 590th, there were regular ones. On RCA, its clear connectors are now royal, as a flagship should be. The number of inputs has decreased, but the layout is now more understandable. Two balanced inputs and two unbalanced, in the 590th there were three. Two exits, fixed and adjustable level, are immediately behind them. The amplifier preamp scheme, identical to the flagship P30A, is hidden behind them. They simplified it a bit, of course, to fit into one case with the power amplifiers. The power amplifiers, as they say, also drew a lot from the design of the flagship amplifiers H30A. But as far as I understand, this is more about the PSU. 
The transformer here is different, not like in 590. And the ultimate cascades, I dare to propose, have experienced not as many modifications. But these are just my guesses. And of course, the proprietary Sound Engine 2 technology is here, of course. If you don't know, this is one of the most important features of Hegel amplifiers. It was created by the founder of the company, Ben Holter, in 1997 at the request of the telecommunications holding company, Telenor. With its help, dynamic correction of the signal is carried out in amplifier cascades, allowing to minimize distortions using not global but local negative feedback. In contrast to the more well-known chain of feedback overall, Correction is utilized locally and applied each time to subsequent amplification cascades instead of a familiar chain. The result, as the Norwegians say, is obvious. The final signal corresponds much more closely to the original than in a regular amplifier. By the way, this invention is protected by an American patent, as indicated by the proud inscription on the rear panel of each Hegel amplifier. This is no joke, all amplifier manufacturers are honing well-known schematic solutions and more and more people are not bothering and buying ready-made Class D modules from Hypex or Pascal. And Hegel possesses his own unique circuitry and this fact is confirmed by the patent obtained from the United States of America. We will discuss whether it is good or not further when we talk about sound. Over the analog inputs there is a group of digital switching of its DAC and streamer. First comes the digital output on BNC because suddenly you may want to use your classic DAC on discrete components. Then the inputs. BNC, coaxial, 3 optical, USB-B and Ethernet connections are available for connectivity. And the digital module is the most noticeable difference. He is completely new. The converter chip here is no longer AKM as it was in the 590. It is interesting that there is a discrepancy on the internet about the chip. Some individuals state that it is the ESS Sabre while others assert that it is a Burr Brown chip. To put an end to all these misunderstandings, I simply removed the top cover and took a look. In reality, there is a Sabre ES9038Q2M present here. It is interesting that the Hegel DAC does not have oversampling. The company states that it degrades the sound quality. Well, we will need to rely on their words since we are unable to test Hegel's DACs with oversampling. The module itself is equipped with a separate power supply that has its own transformer and this ensures clean and stable operation, as they say. The DAC board is protected by a thick steel shielding plate, separating the sensitive electronics from other equipment interference inside the amplifier. This module offers all the necessary features for modern digital audio. It includes UPnP, Spotify Connect, Chromecast 2, AirPlay 2, Tidal Connect, and the manufacturer has stated that Rune certification will be finished soon. This means that the 600th module will be Rune ready. All possible formats including DSD are supported and even the MQA which is cursed by audiophiles is still in business. To evaluate the sound of the best amplifier in the world, I had wonderful but quite tight and demanding Audio Platinum 200 monitor speakers with their super technologically advanced latest generation drivers. It turned out to be such a super modern set, which is also wired with Nordos cables, which I have been using for many years. What about the sound? As expected, the flagship Hegel has not lost its signature character. This is still an amplifier that sounds amazingly rich and full-bodied. Listening to him, you fall under his power. He is powerful, he commands the columns and instructs you on how the music should sound. The control of this large and complex acoustics is simply amazing. The tonal sound is rather neutral without any obvious leaning towards warm or cold side, but due to its rich and full-bodied presentation, the sound subjectively feels slightly warm in the lower mid-range, but in fact no colouring is heard in the details. Just the sound is very textured always. The middle and top are maximally neutral and very detailed. And I am certain that both Monitor Audio and Hegel have a deep appreciation for rock music. So it sounds absolutely incredible in this system. Just recently, the American band Dirty Honey, after returning from their sold-out tours in the UK and Europe, sat down, recorded and released their second album. He was recorded with producer Nick Didier, who worked with Rage Against the Machine, Pearl Jam, Stone Temple Pilots and Bruce Springsteen you will receive a total of 45 minutes of good, juicy, unbridled, in a positive sense, hard and blues rock with pleasant references to the finest years of this genre, featuring bright guitar solos and wild drums. 
Overall, the musicians created a commotion, as they say Hegel does everything for you to completely enjoy this noisy music. Each instrument is juicy, and the dynamics are such that it can knock you off your feet if you overdo the volume. Whip, rapid and loud, and in the location it is supposed to be, succulent, full-bodied and meaty. Simultaneously, no biases, no range allocated, nothing protrudes ahead, everything well thought out. And despite the fact that Heigl is a big evil monster, he is not at all alien to the most delicate materials and sophistication in the details, which the Platinum series columns love to show. I can say in general that audio platinum monitors are speakers that captivated me precisely by how delicacies and details sound on them. Listen to the album by the Brazilian instrumental group Uacti, composed by the renowned composer Philip Glass and released on Deco Records. This is an incredible 55-min journey of Yoda along the rivers of the Amazon with a blend of classical New Age and jazz music as the soundtrack. It sounds tedious in words, I comprehend, but in reality it is rather straightforward music, such an exhilarating, abundant with exotic sounds, easy listening. So there's no need to be afraid, gentlemen. Moral enrichment has never been so accessible for comprehension. This music performed by Hegel easily floats in the air, scattering into myriad of small sounds, and exotic percussion of all kinds literally materializes here. Everything is extremely natural and open, with no synthetic elements in the sound, and the space is impressively constructed in terms of both width and depth. And dessert, modern British folks, guys. There is indeed a talented singer in the stunning expanses of Misty Albion, and her name is Eliza Carty. Critics describe her as a celebrated innovator and a leading star of the vibrant English folk music scene. Eliza Carthy achieved recognition in the mid-1990s both as a solo artist and as a part of Waterson Carthy, the folk ensemble formed by her parents. They are certain types of well-known English symbols. Generally, it is passed down through generations. I recommend you to listen to her album from 2013, where you will be amazed to discover that contemporary English folk music is highly contemporary. Some tracks literally amaze with the audacity of borrowing from other genres, such as rap and rock, for example. Generally, despite not being my type of music, I added this album to my favorites. Eliza's vocals with Hegel's presentation are truly impressive. The dynamics are incredible, and her voice's power, the vocalist's talent, are vividly shown before you. At some moments, the way she can shout is chillingly realistic. It sends shivers down your spine. And on some lyrical things, you enjoy the subtleties of her beautiful live voice. This is not synthetic modern production singers licked on the computer by expensive producers. The voice of Eliza here is very natural which further emphasizes her repertoire inspired by old-school music. Yes, Hegel can show you something so subtle and weightless that you sit as if chained. An excellent, highly versatile amplifier, but you won't believe it, I discovered some flaws in it that were unexpected. First of all, there are no XLR outputs here, which I think is a disadvantage for a flagship. He does not have dedicated subwoofer outputs, but you can use standard outputs. Although all normal music subs are now connected via high output, so it's not really a downside, but if you want to connect a theatrical sub to it, you will have to occupy the connectors of its regular outputs. And he doesn't have HDMI, which is a disadvantage for a modern amplifier, and you remember that he was awarded the title of the best streaming amplifier in the world, this may also be some kind of drawback, at least for some users. And he does not have his own application yet, Will you use M-Connect or possibly Rune when it gets certified? However, it is among the initial devices globally to obtain Chromecast 2.0. What kind of beast I have yet to figure out, but beyond the scope of this review. Otherwise, it is truly an amazing amplifier. He provides a reference level of sound that you can't find fault with at all. This is a true flagship in the face of Hegel Company. Well, it couldn't be otherwise. H600 embodies exactly the set of qualities that everyone loves about this Norwegian brand. And in the new gen, this set of qualities has become even richer. The amp as a product has definitely become slightly more attractive than its predecessor, surpassing it in everything, including awards. But is this the best streaming amplifier in the world? European experts are unanimous on this issue, but only you can answer this question for yourself. Come and listen.